All right. Good. Well, it's good morning here from Seattle, Washington, the Ballard neighborhood of Seattle, Washington. I know we've got people joining us from uh, all over the all over the country today, potentially all over the world. Plenty of good folks I see uh, here in the attendee list, a bunch of familiar names, uh, including some of our uh, Lou or previously AISS beta members. I'm going to actually follow up with a couple of you to, to get you up to speed. You'll see what uh, we've got here, but also I want to uh, give you all a chance to to play around with this and get your feedback on, on what we've built. Um, but yeah, thank you everybody for joining today. This webinar will be uh, recorded. It's recorded by Zoom. And honestly, if you're done with this, you want to take a you know quick peek or you had to look away for a second. We're also streaming this right now live on uh, X, formerly Twitter, uh, Facebook, and LinkedIn as well. So as soon as this is done, uh, the recording will be right there. So if you want to hand it over to somebody else, you can always do that um, and just grab it from uh, one of our social pages. Um, I've got the uh, old school Apple headphones going, which just a kind of a, a modern marvel. The audio has worked well for a long time. So that's what we're going with to uh, reduce some echo and make sure that we're good to go there. Uh, I'm going to keep an eye on chat as far as Q&A or if people want to raise hands. Um, don't hesitate to ask questions uh, at any time and, I'll, uh, and I'm happy to answer those. But uh, let's dive in uh, into what we've got with Lou uh, at Lexblog. It's a really exciting time for us, an exciting product that we're able to roll out. Uh, in leading product here at Lexblog, my job is uh, honestly to, to lean on some of the, the smartest people at the company to, uh, I'm really just, you know, standing on their shoulders to to brag about the work that they've done. Um, but they do give me good reason to to boast and to brag. And this is an opportunity to just that, to do just that, to show you what we've built. Um, so let me dive in here to a couple of things and we'll get into a live demo. So Here's what we'll discuss so far today, just so you can get the full background for what we're doing. Um, you may have seen some of the coverage, which is going to reflect that, you know, you're getting a similar presentation to what we've given to media members like uh, Bob Ambrosi, Gino Grady. Um, Bob had some great coverage of this. If you want to take a look at Lost Sites, uh, don't hesitate to do so. He's got a great breakdown of what we've got here, but you'll also get a look at it here yourself. So, we're going to get into our approach behind building Lou, kind of our thoughts behind AI, what was kind of the driving force, uh, and really also just, you know, why we have it do some things and potentially, you know, what we'd recommend using it for or not using it for as well. Uh, we'll get into a live demo of Lou, uh, taking a look at the tools themselves, and then also uh, leave a little bit of time for any of your questions that you that you may have as far as, you know, what this does, what it doesn't do, and those types of things. Um so let's start with a little bit of the backstory, uh, a little bit of uh, background on our approach to building out Lou. Um, so Lou, previously called AI Assist, has been our focus for about eight months now, at least our product group's uh, primary focus in terms of what we're building, working on building, uh, ever since, you know, kind of Chad GPT took off, these large language models took off and really were just everywhere. Our CEO, Kevin O'Keefe, pushed us to say, hey, what, what can we do here? What can we build quickly? How can we get involved in this AI space? Uh, and because of the team that we have, we were able to move very quickly on it. I think we had a really, really early beta done in a matter of weeks. And that was, uh, some folks got to take a look at that at LMA National. Um, and now, you know, about half a year later, we've got something a little bit more robust. Uh, I'm really proud of the team that we have. We have some of just the very best WordPress engineers. Uh, they do an outstanding job uh, leading on this was Angelo Carosio, Scott Fennell, and then our creative director, Brian Biddle, uh, also played an integral role. Uh, for those familiar with Lexblog, which I think is the vast majority of people on this webinar, uh, not too long ago, probably, well, actually now it feels a little bit longer, uh, so maybe a five or so years ago, Lexblog made a big change in kind of how it builds stuff, how it operates. So when we build publications for the firms that we work with, uh, previously that would involve slicing up a Photoshop file, developing it, uh, and, and basically all our engineers were doing was, was building individual blogs every day over, over, over and over again. Eventually we built blog building software that enables, uh, people to build blogs who don't need to have the development expertise, the coding expertise and stuff like that. So that enables our engineers to work on more forward-looking stuff. 
to build stuff that we're adding to the platform that's further uh, enhancing the product that people are using and paying a subscription cost for. Um, so now that we have developers, we have engineers who don't have to spend time developing blogs, they can build stuff like Lou and some of the other stuff that we've rolled out recently, like snapshots and image library, uh, social cards or something that we're really stoked about. You know, you may have seen that Twitter now doesn't display headlines uh, on your links, but if you have a Lex blog blog and you drop a link on there, there'll still be a nice little graphic that shows the, uh, the card there. Um, our foundation also is, of course, we we have been doing law blogs and digital publishing in the law for closing in on 20 years now. So we have a stable foundation to stand on. You know, like I said, my my job as director of product, a lot of it is just standing on the shoulders of some really, really smart people and getting the opportunity to talk to you all about the great job that they did. Uh, but before that, and also in addition to that, uh, I've worked with in, in our publishing group, previously editorial. So I've seen in, the content, the insight that's put out by uh, lawyers and law firms. You know, I, man, I, I was, for those who are familiar, and I know there's a more than a few people who are, uh, you know, the old top 10 in law blogs, best in law blogs. I was going through, you know, the 200 posts from our network every single day, highlighting the best 10. So I feel like I've gotten a good feel for what stands out uh, in law blogging, what doesn't stand out, what works, what doesn't work. Uh, and that type of insight and expertise is built into the product itself. So here's kind of our approach or where we started with, uh, with regards to AI and kind of how we look at it. So artificial intelligence, obviously, is going to play an increasing role in our lives, in all of our lives, you know, in the next 25, 50, 75 years, who knows where this thing will go, let alone, you know, 6, 12, 18 months. Um, but it isn't necessarily new. These large language models are obviously getting a ton of buzz. Uh, they're just absolutely, you know, everywhere now. That's what people are talking about oftentimes when they talk about AI. But it isn't entirely new. I mean, AI has been everywhere for a long period of time now. If you, for example, I, I got this screenshot up here. I don't know how many people use Spotify. It's not kind of quickly jumped ahead as the leading uh, music platform. But if you go on Spotify and you, you know, do a search for mix for you, it will generate uh, a number of playlists on subjects that you don't think you would ever listen to. Like you have your, oh, it's like, oh, I have an AI creative auto mix for the soul mix, my soul, my forest mix, uh, escape is a mix. So there's all these different things that are AI generated. If you, for example, use Google Maps to navigate around, that's powered by AI or Waze is a similar one. Um, and Waze is even, uh, you know, kind of a good analogy. I was thinking about this uh, just yesterday in terms of how I was trying to frame how we approach AI and what we trust it for versus what we don't trust it for. Um, so take Waze, for example. I don't know if, uh, you know, if you live in a major city and you've had to commute by car, you probably used Waze. Uh, it's always looking for, for shortcuts, ways around, evaluating travel times and what have you. Um, I live in a neighborhood that's off of a couple busy streets. And one of the things that I uh, don't love is people cutting through a residential neighborhood to get around traffic. So if Waze comes to me and says, hey, you should you should actually swing a right down this one lane neighborhood where kids might be playing and just cut through there and cut this way and keep going up that way. You know, I may look at that AI suggestion and go, Mm, you know, I don't, I don't love that. I'm going to stay on this road and it's going to, I'll let it figure it out from there. So that's something that also applies even to, to using a tool like Lou, which is it's, it's not a set it and forget it type tool. No AI tool is uh, at this point. Um, and I don't think you ever really want them to be, uh, you want it to be something that you have oversight of the, another analogy I've said is, Hey, if, you know, if you had to go give a speech in front of a hundred people and, you know, you had a you know speech slid across the table, 500 words from the best speech writer in existence. Maybe you got, you know, Barack Obama speech writers working for you and they're going, hey, I got to have you read these 500 words in front of 100 people. No matter what, you're not going to go out and read that without giving a look at it, without being like, does this line up with what I think? Is it sound smart? Do I actually agree with it? All right, cool. I do. So yeah, always, that's a key thing in uh, uh, kind of our approach to this is that 
AI has been out there and we've tried to take some of the things that we've seen and apply that to the tool by making it a little bit more accessible, uh, making it a little bit more purpose built than what you see with like the chat GPT experience. Um, chat GPT, some people have gravitated towards it. It's very useful, great interface. It's wonderful. For other people, the there's a little bit of that kind of uncanny valley in the chat type interface. So we have that in Lou inside this tool that we've built, but we've also made it a little bit more uh, accessible and purpose-built for people who maybe are not as familiar with AI, but know some of the things they want to do and might not have known that AI could help with those types of things. So whether or not you're a chat GPT power user like our CEO, Kevin O'Keefe is, or you're somebody who's just like, hey, where do I even start using this type of thing? Uh, Lou, we built something that I think can help out both people. Um, so here's what we've got. I mentioned there, we've got a number of purpose-built tools that are really specifically aimed at tasks that bloggers and legal marketers and professionals have to do on a regular basis. So these are tools that were developed with the idea that, hey, we've seen kind of what good blogs do, what they don't do, uh, and tried to build tools that help others do those things. Um, so it was developed with both blogging lawyers and marketing professionals in mind. We're kind of trying to, to, you know, straddle the line here a little bit. I know a lot of people don't have their individual lawyers. If you're a, you know, digital marketing manager or what have you, uh, you know, practice group uh, specialist, some people have their lawyers log directly into the LexBlog platform and write, some do not. Uh, so I'm just, we tried to build a tool that accommodates both those groups, but at the same time, it's also a very early iteration of this product. We're going to keep on building, keep on adding to it based on feedback. So as you take a look at this, as people give it a shot, uh, don't hesitate to say, Hey, you know, what would be nice is this, Hey, you know, what would be nice is that. Um, but we've started at a place where we want it to be very useful to both groups, um, and tried to build it with that in mind. Um, so we've got open, like I mentioned, it's open-ended for the AI power user, but it's also something that it's really flexible. So as we have to do fine tuning in the prompts that we send over to ChatGPT, we can do that very quickly. Like if, you know, I'm taking a look at it and going, oh, is this turning out the right suggestions for this? Is it not turning out the right suggestions for that? We can always adjust the prompts that we're delivering to ChatGPT in the way that we've coded certain things so that we can adjust quickly. It's a very flexible uh, product that we've built here early on. Um, but ultimately the big thing, Hey, why, why, why do this? Why, why could this be helpful? Ultimately efficiency is key. You know, if we can cut your publishing time down, even 30%, that is an enormous step because it ultimately takes a little bit less time to do every single post. All of a sudden you're able to create more content or, you know, heck, maybe, maybe it takes you an entire football game to write a blog post and you're keeping an eye on it. Well, well let's at least clear off the second half so you can enjoy that football game on a Sunday afternoon. Um, ultimately, uh, we want to make your posts more readable and more engaging. We think we've built stuff that enables us to do that. Also helps lawyers get into deeper niches so they're covering more unique subjects. Um, and then social sharing. I've been in the position, I, I'm sure there are people on this call who are writing social copy and they're always having to like come up with a new way to say things. And it can get a little bit monotonous, a little bit repetitive. Uh, I've been there. I've been in that role where you're having to run socials for a big brand. You're like, all right, I mean, I'm just trying to find another way to phrase this and or I'm trying to digest something I don't necessarily understand. Um, we've built some tools that I think will help there. Um, idea generation, we know that's a big struggle for lawyers and law bloggers is just getting a quick start. Um, and then also we pride ourselves on just the integration that we've built here. This is really truly built directly into the publishing platform. Um, and then of course, uh, with Lou, it comes with everything that that Lexblog's built around it. So uh, you have a tool that you can always lean on Lexblog support or education um, sessions like this um, where we can help you out. But uh, you know, without going too much farther, let's take a look at what we've got with Lou. I think we have, let's see if we got one Q&A here. Anonymous attendee says, how do you access Lou and use it? If you go to uh, asklou.ai, you can, uh, yeah, answer live, there we go. Uh, done. Uh, 
you can go to askglue.ai and request to get kind of a demo. You'll have a sense of that or reach out honestly to me personally, Colin, C-O-L-I-N at laxblog.com. Say, hey, we want to give a shot at this. Um, we're lo looking at letting a few more folks into uh, our beta. So if you're interested in giving it a shot, uh, please don't hesitate to even just reach out to me personally, Colin, C-O-L-I-N at lexblog.com via email uh, and happy to uh, help facilitate that. Um, so let's take a look. Get out of this here and get over to uh, Chrome. Let me switch this here one second. We are going to go, bear with me, there we go. So, a little scratch paper in here already, or a little bit of notes in here already. Uh, for those, this interface, as you take a look, what we've got here, is probably not going to look too unfamiliar from for most people who are already on the LexBlog platform. This is the publishing interface. This is where you access Lou. Everything that we've built thus far is accessed on a, a post page. We're looking at building out more tools, more blog-wide tools, and also even network-wide tools. Uh, but this is where we started. We wanted to start where the rubber meets the road, where people interact with the LexBlog product the most, which is in uh, the publishing interface. So. One of the things that I'll be sure that I want to note for sure is it's not in your face. Um, if you want to use it, it's there. If you don't, it's not. This isn't going to be something like, you know, Mr. Clippy from the old uh, Microsoft Word days that's constantly popping up and saying, do you want to do this? Do you not want to do this? Do you want to do that? Uh, no. If you want to use it, it's there. It's, it's, it's there as a tool. If you don't, you don't have to. Um, if you're worried about it, you know, again, jumping up in lawyers' faces and telling them to do stuff they don't need to do. It's, it's not going to do that. Um, but yeah, we've got a, a blank page here as starts every blog post. Um, and up here in the top right, you'll see, yeah, we've got a little button for Lou, which is going to call out what we call uh, our Lou control panel. So I'll walk through these tools for you so we can get a sense of what those are. Um, and yeah, I think it's, it's pretty nifty. Uh, but we'll start with some of the more purpose-built tools before we go back to uh, something that's a little bit more open-ended. So when you're getting started with a blog post, oftentimes you're trying to decide, hey, what, where should I even start? What are some post ideas? Uh, so that was one of the first things we took a look at was how can we generate post ideas? How can we kind of walk people into this experience? So yeah, I mean, let's, let's, let's give post ideas a shot. So, you know, you could say I'm an employment lawyer in Wisconsin. There's a, a, a little bit of the Lex blog roots tied in here, ties to Wisconsin. But let's say we're going to do privacy law in California. I don't know. That's I'm a privacy lawyer in California. Where what should I hit? What's an what's an easy one that can get us started? Um yeah so we've got some good ones. We could get you know a comprehend anything that's a comprehensive guide I'm always worried is like that could take forever. Um impact of California's privacy law on small businesses that that catches my eye because it's very specific. I know if I have small business clients, I can. This is something that I know I can send them. I know this will appeal to a certain group, um, and it's just more. It's a little bit more straightforward. Um, uh, similarly, from theory to practice, applying California's privacy law in everyday business operations. You know how it's shaping the future of digital marketing. CCPA is, of course, very, very, very big. You know, let's go with the impact of California's privacy law on small businesses. I think that's a good one to start. So you click that. It's like, all right, well, we got our title in here. We're ready to go. That's a great one. But it's, it is, again, just to start. Uh, I mentioned, I guess I didn't mention this off the top, but it should be uh, said is, you know, LexBlog is not trying to create a tool that's going to write entire blog posts for you and you just send them off into the ether. And it's, I think I saw people at The Verge call it like C plus content. Um, that is just, you know, we're going to spit up a bunch of C plus content that's AI generated, doesn't have personality or expertise. That's not what we're saying to do. We're trying to create specific tools that make the writing process easier, faster, more efficient, and produce better results. But we're not trying to create a tool so that people aren't writing uh, at all. Uh, somebody asked, how is your data slash content accessed and used slash stored by Lou? 
So we access ChatGPT via ChatGPT. Well, we'll answer why. We access ChatGPT via uh, OpenAI's API. So everything that goes through here is sent to ChatGPT via that API. And the question that people often have is like, oh, do I have to, are they going to be training based on my this? Am I, am I relinquishing that? Um, OpenAI has said, and I can say here, they do not train their models based on what goes across uh, the API. Uh, one of the things that's really nice or potentially really nice with like learning about AI in blogging is that you are working with content material um, items that are public facing. You're sharing insight, you're sharing writing, you're sharing perspectives that is going out to the world. So it's like the stuff that you're blogging about is the same as the stuff that you would talk about at a cocktail party. So like, yeah, you may blog about or, or talk about a recent ruling in California, you know, at on a blog post, you may talk about it at a cocktail party. You're not going to talk about like sensitive documents, uh, sensitive discovery issues uh, at a cocktail party. You're not going to talk about it on your blog either. Um, but because this is forward facing, because this does get out there, it is a nice place to really uh, get out there. Another good question. I, again, I just love, sorry, uh, bear with me, everybody. I'm going to take the questions live and then we'll bowl through it. Somebody asked, Ashley asked, where did Lou pull the title and topic suggestions? Is it tracking real-time trends, litigation, policies, et cetera? So it is right now it's purely pulling them from the large language model itself. So basically we've, we've keyed it up such that we've said, we have it enter a prompt like, hey, I'm writing a blog post on this type of terms. Can you give us back something that's a little bit more like that? So right now it is not keyed into real-time trends, litigation policies, et cetera. It kind of learns with the, it learns with the chat GPT model. Uh, OpenAI, Sam Altman went on yesterday during uh, chat GPT dev days uh, and talked about the new model, chat GPT turbo four, which takes the learning cutoff up to, I believe, April of this year. So we'll be rolling that model out as the backbone of ChatGPT. So that's kind of the short answer. The longer answer is, as we start building these tools, we can uh, use Lou and use AI to get closer to what you're describing there, Ashley, which is you know, is it tracking real-time trends, litigation, and policies? One of the things that we're looking to potentially do is build tools along the lines of, hey, I've taken a look. This is one of your most popular posts. Here are four more post ideas based on that. Um, uh, and, and along those types of things. Uh, we had, so basically it's not right now, but we are working on, getting it more involved in real-time trends, particularly because we're able to draw on our community of content and be able to say, hey, based on what we're seeing in our, uh, uh, based on what we're seeing, uh, uh, based on what we're seeing in our employment law community, here's how it uh, generate, here's some post ideas as far as that. So we've got that done. Um, I'm going to skip over one for now. I'm going to come back to the one on copyrights. Uh, is Lou training on our own data within Lou? Uh, no, it's not. There's, it's not training based on that uh, right now. It's basically just Lou. The, the ChatGPT API does not use does not use any of the information inputted to train. Uh, somebody asked which model of OpenAI is ChatGPT is integrated with. Uh, we're working off of ChatGPT four primarily, and we'll bump it to. Uh, chat GPT for turbo, which was rolled out yesterday uh, to get cooking through that as well. And we're back. <clears throat> Sorry, I always think of that old like Saturday Night Live skit. And we're back and we are back. Uh, so, and again, we'll get to some more too as well. I just want to make sure we hit the entire thing. Um, so we've got our post idea. It's a quick little easy start. It's generated primarily just from the large language model, although we are looking to uh, other data points that we can feed into it, potentially like, hey, here are the posts that a blog has published recently. Here are the headlines in the employment law community. Uh, 
it just involves us getting creative at at Lexblog in terms of what we what wire we plug in where what how we do that type of thing. Um, but yeah, we've got a title. It's a little bit of a start. Still a long ways to go to a finished post. Let's say you want a little bit more help. You want a little bit more something there. Uh, so let's let's create some sections, which is it'll give you a little bit of a basic outline for uh, what to pull in there. So you can potentially go, all right, that looks pretty good. Actually, let's 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 give that another crack. Oh geez, Louise. let's just give that another. There we go. I forgot to punch in that title. There we go. Introduction. So you can get a little bit of background. So basically, if you were like, hey, Bob, or hey. Uh, Art Vandelay, Professor Van Nostrin. I know you've been struggling to come up with a post idea. I'm here as you know the digital marketing manager for the, the for the privacy group. Um, this is you know I'm not gonna you know there's still a little bit of ways to go, but I prepared a draft of a post uh, on the blog. And honestly, if you go in there and you punch in two paragraphs for each one of these little things, you're gonna have the vast majority of a blog post. Let's just keep that uh, you know. He, I've got a nice start for you. If you go in there, it's the impact of California's privacy law on small businesses. If you And there's some headings in there, a little outline. If you can fill in a couple paragraphs between those, you've got a, a, a great start to a blog post. Um, so that's the, the sections tool, which gives people a quick little start for that. Um, so we've hit post ideas. We've hit suggestion or sections. Uh, another one that I really like is summarize article. Uh, a lot of blogging, I, I found that oftentimes the hardest blog posts to write are the ones that come purely from your own head. This honestly would be an example. Well, not purely an example, but those posts where you're like, I'm trying to write a primer. I'm trying to, here's some thoughts completely uh, from my own head as far as, I don't know, the comfort. I, the thing that comes to mind for me is I love my uh, e-bike. I have a, a rad wagon e-bike that is my primary mode of transportation when I don't tip over and bust a collarbone. But uh, I wanted to write up, I hit 6,000 miles on my bike a year ago. And I wanted to write a big blog post about notes from 6,000 miles. And it just takes a long time. What's a lot easier to write about is, Hey, in blogging is, Hey, I saw this interesting thing. Here's what it means for my audience. Hey, I saw this interesting thing. Here's what it means for my audience. And a lot of times for, uh, lawyers, it's, Hey, here's this, this case, here's this ruling, here's this progress, this advancement, here's what it means, uh, for my constituent, you know, for the people that I work with. So one of the suggestions that we had was, Hey, can, can I like upload a PDF, like a ruling and have it help me summarize what's going on in there? Uh, I think the person who suggested it is even, uh, one of our attendees today. Uh, let's double check that he's still, he, Hey, Frank. Yeah. Well, I, I bet it is Francis. If that's, I see Francis GXY. So, um, uh, I see Francis there. So one of the things I was going to say was, if you want, yep, that's Francis requested, hey, can we upload documents? So, hey, if you say, for example, got a ruling out of the Delaware Court of Chancery uh, and you're like, hey, I want to be able to, this is my computer being fussy. We want to summarize a ruling here. It's like, all right, we've got, you know, we've got this ruling out of the Court of Chancery. I, got, Francis, I'll be honest, I pulled this off of uh, the front end of the blog. Just to grab an example, I know, Francis, this is something that you blog on. This is kind of a similar in length or standard in length. So you got, we've got a ruling out of the state court of chancery. All right, what can we summarize? Can I get the gist of this relatively quickly? Uh, you can upload that and it will spit out a bit of a summary. You always want to kind of double check it to make sure that it is exactly right um, uh, and what we have there. So yeah, we'll spit out your ruling. One of the things that's a really, 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 really nice step forward for us is I mentioned again, chat GBT for turbo, uh, that model, that one expands what we call our, our context limit. So previously there's a limit on how much text, how many characters you can send over to chat GPT that continues to climb and climb and climb and climb. Uh, in the latest model, it's now all the way up to like a chapter book, basically a novel's length of content when previously it was much lower. So this tool in particular, summarizing content from other places 
should be really helpful. And you could even say, hey, what 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 copy style should this be? Professional, casual. If there was more already written, you could match the content. And similarly, if you're like, hey, let's let's have this be a bulleted list. I'm gonna have casual free try, and it can get that going for you as well. Similarly, let's say for example, we were gonna, I don't know, let's let's go to uh, let's say we were grabbing privacy or privacy in California. We've got some, some familiar faces here. Save California. Take some big steps for digital rights. I want to get the gist of it. Go back over to our platform here. Just punch in our uh, URL, see if what we get. You can go copy a news article in there, uh, and it will pump out, hey, here's a little bit of a summary for you. Here's what I was taking a look at. Let's see if this rolls through. It's taking its time. Make sure it's not behind the paywall. But it's not going to be able to hit it. Let's try this guy. That's an interesting one. So it'll generate a nice little bolded list. That's a summary, or you can do it in paragraph form or what have you, but it gives you a nice little summary based on a news article, a case or what have you. Uh, gets you started. So, you know, and I mentioned, we're always fine tuning things. As I take a look at this, we'll probably tighten up the length of a summary so that it is indeed a summary. Um, but it's a nice start where if you're a blogger and you're saying, hey, taking a look at this, I need a paragraph that just, you know, kind of summarizes what we have here. Uh, you can get that from Lou. Uh, so let's get into, so we've kind of taken a look at kind of the tasks that go into an individual blog post from the very start of it. And then now we get into improving a blog post. Uh, so let's say we have one. This one's from, uh, this is from Covington. I think it was on their blog, Inside Compensation. This is, I'm not, if if there are Covington folks on here, I am not training the model in any way from the data. And I am most certainly not uh, editing the post as it lives live on a Covington blog. So no, no sweat there. Um, but yeah, this is a sample of a relatively standard law blog post. Let's say we didn't have a title, uh, for example. I know a lot of times the way that this process works is a lawyer may send you a Word document. Hey, here's here's this. Let's get this up. Let's get this online and get it out there. Um, so with that in mind, let's go to, hey, we've got this post. Uh, it's kind of big. It's kind of blocky, but and I don't have a title yet. What are we going to do? All right, let's, can we suggest a title? See what we have here. And one of the things that it's nice at, I feel it gives you good titles and also titles that are pretty solid as far as SEO goes. So if I go back, this is one way to approach it. California doubles down on yet another law on employee non-competes, which is strong. I think that's going to perform well on social, but you, you know, this, when you get the, the, uh, the bills themselves in there, the orders themselves in there, that also can be really big, helps with SEO. Um, but yeah, say for example, you didn't have a title already. You could, for example, go navigating changes in this SB 699 and AB 1076. Um, but yeah, that's a nice, we can suggest a title in there. If you're, you know, a digital marketing manager struggling to come up with better titles, you're taking a look at this and you're like, ah, how does this, how does this, uh, how does this work? How do we do that? Um, that's a good one. Uh, so suggest a title, a key, key, key tool. Uh, second one that we've got here, writing style. This is a big challenge. This is probably the most kind of aggressive of the tools that we've built. It's probably best used by the authors themselves so they can take a look at it. But, you know, say for example, you've got this post, it's a little, little stuffy. Let's go in here. Let's, let's make this a little bit more understandable, huh? And Lou will go through, take a look at the post itself. Uh, and kind of rewrite it in a way that's a little bit more understandable for folks. Um, that's always the big, big, big challenge, I think, in law blogging is realizing that the audience for your post is not always, and oftentimes, like usually, not other lawyers. And when it's not other lawyers, you want to write in that way. So it'll work its way through the post and and make this a little bit more understandable and and 
hit that. But you could also say, for example, if you thought you were sloppy and you were uh, writing really quickly, I've, I, I have this, there's this writer trick that I that stuck in my head from a long time ago. A Simpsons writer used to say, Hey, I, I have a helper that writes my post. It's like a sloppy elf where he would, you know, at night go in and, and do a bunch of writing and just getting it on the paper. It's the sloppy elf that just goes in, puts it on the paper, gets it done. Um, maybe you're that person and you're the sloppy elf that goes and puts it on the paper and you're going, Hey, let's make this more professional. Uh, it can do that too. Um, and if for some reason you're like, eh, this isn't going quite right. We can stop it. But also at the same time, you want to, Hey, we can accept it. We can get that in there. Let's accept this one looks good. Like, oh, that one actually doesn't look good. What have you. So we'll get that post back to normal there, but you can change your writing style and it'll go in and suggest edits based on that. Uh, something that's coming soon that we're working on is uh, adjusting just simple formatting. So say, for example, you have a lawyer who doesn't want you to change their language, which is understandable. Um, I like the way that I write. I like the way some people will say, oh, you're not supposed to use an M dash like that. Oh, that's a partial sentence. And I don't know. I think I was describing it to somebody else when talking about Grammarly. And that's like, hey, hey, let me just get my Vonnegut on for a second and add my, and so it goes in there and let me use my partial sentences uh, as opposed to getting up my butt about small little things. So you might say, hey, let's just change the formatting. This post has big blocky paragraphs. Let's leave the language, adjust the formatting. That's one of the things that we're working on right now is a tool where, hey, make this more accessible, make it more readable. Um, but only do that, do that without changing the language. Uh, so another tool that's coming soon is suggesting categories. Like I mentioned, I know a lot of times the way that this works is somebody slides a Word doc over to you and they say, get it up on the blog. And you're going, well, I don't have a title. I don't have categories. Now I got to try to understand what what's going on with these non-competes or something even more dense, theoretically. Uh, this will This tool will read your post and will suggest from your existing list of categories, what categories you dropped in. Uh, one of our lead engineers, Scott Fennell, is working on that, excuse me, right now as we speak. Uh, so finally, as we get to, and actually I'm gonna, let me get this refresh, get this back to our base level version. Um, let's get the auto save. Uh, so back to this original post, back to the tools that we've got here. We've hit suggested title, writing style, categories, uh, takeaway. Like I mentioned, a lot of these tools are built with the idea that we've seen what works well. We've seen what firms do, how they kind of adjust their posts. So for example, if I go to, uh, yeah, I hit this a lot. One of my favorite blogs, California Peculiarities, uh, Cypher Shaw's blog, specifically on employment law in California. They do a really good job. They have the Cypher synopsis on basically all their posts uh, on the vast majority of their blogs, which basically is, hey, if somebody just texts this to you or emailed it to you and you're not wanting to read this whole thing, which is fine. Some people do want to. A lot of effort was put into this and it's very, very good. Um, but some people might go, just give me the, the TLDR. Give me the Cypher synopsis or give me the what we've called it the takeaway. Uh, so we've built a tool that, hey, let's, let's get the takeaway in there. Yeah, new, these new laws, effective length, strength and prohibitions against employee non-competes, increasing litigation risk. So yeah, hey, we've got the takeaway in there. You can always move it around up to the top or, or reformat it in a certain way, always open to uh, different types of things. But that's one of those things where it's like, hey, uh, an associate who's trying to sound way too smart sent me this blog post that is not really a blog post. It's like a white paper and I need to make it more like a blog post. I'm going to put my takeaway in there, my cipher synopsis. Um, Hush Blackwell is another firm that does a really good job with that. Uh, I always bite back, always comes to mind that the data privacy blog. So takeaway is another tool. So like I mentioned, we've got our inspiration kind of just getting started. We've got improving your existing post. And then now, you know, a core part of blogging is, is it's getting it out there. Um, it's, it's, it's sharing it with the world. I know that's a core responsibility of the, I say digital marketing manager or social marketing manager. I know that's a number of different roles that fill these tasks, but I know it is a task that falls on these people a lot. But it also, I mean, we have some solo bloggers on here as well. I mentioned Francis. Um, we have people who run their publication themselves who, you know, doesn't hurt to get a little extra help uh, in drafting social copy. So say, for example, you're like, hey, let's draft a tweet. 
and get a tweet all ready to go and get it shared out there. But similarly, you can go, hey, is this coming from the author account? Is it coming from, you know, Art Vandelay, the lawyer, or is it coming from at Fox Rothschild? And you can adjust accordingly based on that. And then similar, uh, you can adjust the copy style so that it is, uh, hey, let's make it casual. Let's make it more of a tease so people have to click to see exactly what we're talking about, or at least let's, and you can always hit rephrase and try it a number of different times. Um, so we've got that for Twitter. One thing we've seen, again, all these tools are built based on stuff that we've seen and we've seen work. Um, so LinkedIn, for example, we've found, you've probably seen our, if, if, if you're connected with our CEO, Kevin O'Keefe, you've probably seen, for example, that he oftentimes shares shortened versions of his blog posts on Real Lawyers Have Blogs on LinkedIn. So you can write a caption or we can uh, craft what we call, I have it in here as a mini post, which is, hey, make a shortened version of this post so that uh, this goes up. You know, I can share it on LinkedIn. People can get the vast majority of what I've covered, but it is still digestible in that format. Because ultimately, you know, I, I know there's the challenge of like statistics and it's always nice to say, hey, the reason that I have a job is this line, I make this line go up. I make these traffic numbers go up. But ultimately the goal is to get these insights out there. Like, so if somebody reads helpful information on LinkedIn versus on the blog, it, it doesn't matter that much. So let's say we are doing an author account. We're on LinkedIn. Let's do a mini post instead. So it'll kind of put together a little synopsis, something that fits on an entire, uh, you know, it's something a little bit more substantive. Um, but it also is personal. It's, yeah, we've got, if you're an employer with questions about how to comply with these laws, recommend it consulting experience counsel. Um, yeah, got some nice takeaways having there. And you've got something that's ready to go out on LinkedIn. It's a miniature version of your blog post. Uh, hopefully it gets whipped around a whole bunch and you can share directly from the platform as well. Uh, this last one, well, Facebook is really similar. It's got our mini post. This one, uh, lastly, as a we got move to support thing, but well, I love social. I use social all the time. A lot of people's, a lot of people's jobs are are pushing th things through social. But in my blogging experience, like if I want somebody to read my, I want one person to read my content. So I'll, I, I'll tell the bloggers that I work with, you can write a blog post for one person. So say, for example, you are a, a privacy lawyer in, in California working with small businesses. And one of the small businesses you work with is, I don't know, maybe it's a, it's a, it's a health, it's a, a workout gym or what have you. And you're going, Hey, you know, I'm, you know, I, I need an excuse to reach out to this person. I need an excuse to kind of strike. We've been talking about doing a little bit of work together, but we haven't quite gotten all the way there. I need an excuse to reach out. That is better than, Hey, I'm just checking in. But if I write a blog post that is about privacy laws for small businesses in California, and I even have a little anecdote on how it applies to like, let's say it's RFID for swiping your gym card when you go in. Um, I want to make sure I reach out and let them know that, hey, you might be subscribed to the blog, but if I send a personal email to them and go, hey, just wanted to make sure you saw this. If you have any questions, please let me know. You're much more likely to get a response, to get engagement and ultimately get what the reason that that lawyers write these blogs, but just work. Um, so if you're like, hey, I've got this done. A lot of times you finish writing your post, you're ready to slam your laptop shut. You're like, uh, I don't want to do more. St let's, so let's make that a little bit easier and go, hey, let's draft an email. This one's going to be relatively straightforward. Let's not be fussy here. There we go. So this one's kind of your generic, what have you. Hey, here's a link to it. This is if you were sending it to just anybody. But let's say we were sending it to a client or potential client. Yeah, so you can generate a nice little personal email that you can go and then use to send off to other folks. So I've showed you all of the purpose-built tools that we've built thus far. Um, like I mentioned, we wanted to make this as accessible as possible to everybody. But if you're a chat GPT whiz, you use this stuff all the time, 
you just want unfettered access directly in the publishing platform to an AI assistant, an actual chat bot, somebody you can interact with, just go with the base level ass loop. So you can go, hey, can you give me a paragraph of background on the NLRB? Sometimes it's a show off where it's like, well, I'm not going to do just a paragraph, but you get that. And then similarly, if you want to go, a lot of the tools, even we, again, we tried to make them more accessible, but if there are other things that you want to do, like this is, this is useless, but write a haiku about this post. So you could do that, but like more, more realistically, can you give me three engaging title ideas for this post? So you could do that. It's another different way. You could uh, import, it, basically use these tools over here to draft these types of things. Or you could even say, hey, I'm a... So if you want to get into that type of interface, you can get into that. And if you want to draw on the text that it outputs, insert into the post, you can. Or if you want to just use some of it, you can also do that. Um, but it gets you a nice little start. You can stop it right there. Uh, similarly, uh, if you're like, hey, I want to really get focused, get diving in here, we have our full screen experience as well. Um, but yeah, you get to interact directly with this. Like again, I mentioned, we built the purpose-built tools, but if you're thinking, hey, I got something else, I want to ask ChatGPT or I want to have it insert a certain piece of text in there, uh, we can always do that. Um, but that's those are the tools that we've built as a result of Lou. We started in a really focused capacity. We wanted it to be as accessible as possible. We wanted it to do things that we know bloggers need to be able to do. Um, and yeah, we, this is where we've started. If you're interested in giving it a shot. Yeah. I mean, as I, I'll make it as easy as possible. Reach out to me personally, Colin at lexblog.com. Um, we, we can give some priority to the folks that were on this webinar, uh, cause you've taken the time to take a look at this and you're, you know, you'll be familiar with the tool now. Uh, should we be able to get you, get you some access to it? Um, but yeah. And for anybody that's like curious, one of the questions that we had from, uh, our clients is, Hey, are you going to, just flip this on on all the blogs because uh, there's some concern. I know I know AI can be touchy, and some people just you know don't want you know some 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 firms have their lawyers directly in the platform. They want to be aware if that's going to happen. Right now we're not doing that right now. Um, so if you want access, please 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 reach out. Um, but yeah, we can. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. We can get back to. Uh, I can hit some questions while we have folks, and I can answer them uh, as best as I can. Um, somebody says, "How can you tell the information that Lou outputs is not copyrighted material from another author, e.g., another attorney in the legal community?" So the way that these are generated is that its output is never going to be exactly from another place. Um, obviously there are a bunch of copyright and intellectual property, uh, issues in the world of AI. And I think that's something that's being sorted out, but it's primarily based on how the models are trained and whether or not the ways that they're trained are fair use. So it's very similar to like the way that open AI is kind of scraping the internet or looking around the internet is the same way that, uh, Google may scrape and see what's out there. Just the way that it's delivering and connecting people with the content is different than obviously Google. Um, but it's never going to say, hey, if you're saying, hey, grab me a, a paragraph of background on the NLRB, it's not going to go copy and paste that from somebody else's blog. And that's that honestly can lead to some, the way that it works honestly can lead to some challenges or at least questions, which is ChatGPT and you know, Lou by proxy is very unlikely to give you the same answer twice. So sometimes like, well, I get, we get questions from our CEO. Why is this answer not as good as this other answer I got here? 
Well, it's just never going to give you the same answer. It's basically running a new math equation, a very advanced math equation every single time where it's trying to predict what the order of words should be. Um, so yeah, we got that one. Um, somebody asked, will adding graphics be possible? Thank you for this introduction. Thank you, Eddie, for the question. Uh, it's something that we're working on. Uh, I, I, I found that when, when we were kind of laying out the roadmap for this product, some of the AI <laughs> um, art tools were not great. Uh, I think we all saw the, the fingers stuck together and arms coming out of places they shouldn't be. Um, so it wasn't that far along when we started. Now it's much farther. I think people have probably seen the Bing image edition tool. It's something we're definitely looking at. It's built into the uh, OpenAI's API. So it's something that we will take a look at for people to potentially uh, use and insert in there. So you can get imagery. You know, LexBlog, of course, I mean, you, you're always going to have, for example, your image library to draw on. I'm always, I'll be honest in my own experience as a blogger writing on you know, local Seattle issues. And also I, I blog about the Mariners for fun. Um, I find with AI art, I almost spend more time creating AI art than if I just went and got an image. Uh, you're always like trying to get exactly the right. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it turns out great. I've posted an image before of Aaron Judge in a Mariners hat that I would have not been able to do. Um, but it's uh, 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 not always the best, but it is still, again, something we're going to look at. But I think right now, in a lot of cases, I'd probably steer people more towards using an image library, but it is something that we are going to look at. So I answer the last one. Uh, Dennis Kennedy, Dennis asked, Dennis, thanks for joining us. By the way, great to have you here. Uh, assume I want to write a link, write a link, oh, excuse me, guys. I assume that I want to write a weekly link blog post. Uh, how might I use summarize tool to summarize each of the articles at the links by loading the URLs? Do I have control over how many words are in the summary? Uh, we'll also do the links as a bulleted list and put the hyperlink to the underlying article. Uh, another bit of, this is another little bit of the philosophy behind uh, the design of Lou, which is, we tried to make it as simple as we could from the start. So you're getting a long-winded answer to this. Basically, it will generate a summary um, as far as like make it shorter, don't make it shorter, make it this length, make it not this length. Um, we tried to stay away from, like if you open up some AI tools, there's like sliders and drop downs and stuff everywhere. And it's just so intimidating for people to use. So we've started really simple and we'll, we'll then expand from there based on what people want to see. Um, so say, for example, you did say, for example, you're getting too long of a summary right now. You could still copy and paste that summary into the post, or you could potentially then use the ask Lou tool to say, you know, say, for example, the summary is too long. Let's say it's this piece of text. You could potentially say, hey, let's get into ask Lou. Let's say... Can you make this half the length? And it will do that. So there are ways to do the things that you want to do. It's just that we haven't kind of built them all into, there are just some tools where you open up this. And even, even for these, I mean, we've got choices here. Oh shoot! Thank somebody. Dave reminded me that I'm not sharing my screen, so apologies there. I forgot that I'd. Let's go. Uh, da, 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 da. But what I was going to say was, uh, say for example, you did have a paragraph. Uh, let's go back. So you've got your paragraph here. You could always use the Ask Lou tool to say, "Hey, let's let's go ahead and make this half the length," or like, "Let's go ahead and do that." So if you have to refine things, you can. We just didn't build it into the tools quite yet because. I've seen it overdone so much where every, like you for tone, sometimes you may see 25 different tones in some of these tools and it's just really, really tough. So um, I can get into more details with you and we can talk about that, but that's kind of the gist of it and that it can do it, but the fine tuning, you kind of have to do yourself a little bit. Uh, will Lou improve itself in terms of how it interprets and then proposes, suggests such as making something more concise, more understandable? Um, 
yeah, will uh, that's a hard one. Will it improve itself? So I think it will improve itself based on how the chat GPT models improve. So that's something that probably is the main way that we're doing that. But we are also taking a look right now at how do we make this experience more personal that it learns from your use of Lou, that it learns from the things that you're doing. We're not quite there yet because this is, you know, we're trying to stay on the bleeding edge. Uh, uh, OpenAI released something like about creating your own GPT. So we're taking a look at that um, and can have that. Uh, Dennis asks, will the takeaway work on existing posts on your blog? Yes. If you are on, uh, Dennis, I believe you are, if you are on uh, the current uh, Lexblog version, once we get Lou on there, it will work on existing posts so you can play around with it. Um, would you please repeat the name of the data privacy blog that you like? I was going to say uh, Bite Back from Hush Blackwell is a good one, but there are, we have so many good ones. Bite Back. If it's not from Hush, I'm going to be very embarrassed. It is. Let's go. Uh, Bite Back, Hush Blackwell. That's a really good one. You can see they got their key points, like the takeaway built right in there. David Stout says a good idea. This isn't to slight any of the other fine, fine, fine privacy blogs we've got uh, in our community. There are so many good ones. Inside Privacy from Covington is another good one. Uh, Norton Rose runs a really good one. Uh, Data Protection Report, I think it's called. A lot of, lot of, lot of really good ones. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to hit all of these. To clarify, based on prompts you're showing in Ask Lou, it appears that you don't need to delineate role versus or task first output then. I take it that the side buttons fill those. Yeah, so like in a lot of these in, in a lot of these things, you know, you're able to tell Lou what the you're able to you're able to kind of configure what the context is that you're drawing on ChatGPT. We basically take a lot of the finer points, a lot of the kind of intricacies out and take care of it for you. So it it you don't have to delineate like yeah, role, task, that type of stuff. We tried to make it as simple as possible. But we are really relying, relying is a strong. We are really relying and counting on our users' feedback. Um, we have a team that can move quickly, that is going to listen to what people want to see uh, and build this product accordingly. So we've gotten just a start. Like I mentioned, there's stuff that's that's built in here because somebody asked about it. Um, yeah, Francis summarized a case. I, I, I'm impressed that our team was able to pull it off as well as they did. Uh, Angelo Crosio did a fantastic job on that. Um, uh, and yeah. Uh, can you clarify how in your last example, you showed how you were able to ask Luke questions in the body of a blog post? Yeah, absolutely. I'll give you another quick look here. This, I, you know, I probably skipped over it at the start. Uh, there are a couple of different ways. So it's in the Lou control panel. You just hit ask Lou. It'll drop what we call an ask Lou block right in there uh, and take a look and you can just ask questions. This is kind of the shorthand way. Honestly, this is a big, big uh, uh, admission on my part. I didn't know in the new block editor for the longest time that you could use like backslash to access different tools. So that is one way you can also access some of these blocks. So if you have an ask Lou block, you're like, hey, you could, you, I, the, the way I will say to use it is you could open the Lou control panel, press ask Lou, and it will be there to access. Um, second, but if you wanted to go ask Lou, you could always drop that in there too by doing forward slash that. Um, so yeah, that's a nice way you can access it and get that in there. Laura, that is a good question. Says thanks. For, does since this doesn't have a temperature scale to give us understanding of the baseline, was it a fault number on zero to one point of scale? Zero being predictable and one being creative. E.g., is this based on about 0.4 or whereabouts? Yeah, I mean, I'd probably say it could be bound 0.3 or 0.4. Um, it's 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 a fine tuning process, and it is something that we can fine tune quickly, which is really 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 nice. Um, so like, as I'm looking at this, doing this presentation, as we're, we're looking at stuff, I'm looking at it going, I don't kind of want to push post titles to be a little bit more creative. Uh, and that's one of the things that we'll do based uh, on need, basically. And that's something we can do quickly so that, hey, if, if the post titles, like for example, post titles are, if, if our post ideas aren't creative enough, or they aren't specific enough, let's let's crank that notch a little bit and get that to be a little bit more creative versus having it be really straightforward. But we want to be able to find the right spot and we're working to find it basically. Cool, I think. I really, really, really appreciate everyone's time today. I know everybody's showing. I mean, 
it's 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 a it's an afternoon uh on the east coast before uh, a long weekend for a lot of folks so i appreciate those who are hanging in the office spending time with us at lex blog greatly appreciate it um but yeah i think i've hit all the questions if anybody has any more don't don't hesitate at all to reach you can reach out to me personally i you know i say it all all the time it's just we're just all people out here so don't hesitate to reach out if you have questions if you want access colin c-o-l-i-n at lexblog.com uh happy to help happy to walk you through happy to do this presentation for your boss or your lawyers or whatever uh happy to do it but um yeah i think that's all that we've got right now time really freaking flies so i appreciate uh everybody there and uh yeah we'll go from there and um, follow up but thanks everybody for your time that's all we've got for today uh, look forward to, we got probably got some more webinars uh, in AI and publishing coming up soon. Uh, so keep an eye out for those. If you're at LMA Tech West next week, uh, we're going to have some folks there. Connor O'Keefe, uh, Dan Min's going to be there. Kevin should be there as well. Uh, be in good shape. So everybody take care. Travel safe if you're getting around this weekend. Um, and we'll talk soon. And yeah, don't hesitate to reach out. Let's chat. Take care, y'all.